Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel again after like four months I finally decided to upload something new and yeah I was pretty surprised that there were some people who enjoyed the last one so hopefully you would also enjoy this one and I'm gonna be talking about leech out trees which is I mean it's not it's a kind of a well-known thing but there are no tutorials online at least I mean the best things I know of are either like Chinese and you have to use Google Translate for them or there are some comments in some Code Forces blogs but yeah that's nothing like a full tutorial so that's why I decided to try explain how you solve some problems with leech out trees or actually like how you use leech out trees and like what this is but like basically it's a replacement of convex trick and if you are unfamiliar with convex trick, I advise you check it out. It's basically a thing that's pretty common in some problems, either in dynamic programming or some data structures problems. But like, it's a thing you use as a part of the solution. And yeah, let's just go straight to the problem because probably that this will be the easiest way for me to explain it. And like, the problem is like pretty simple. You have initially you have like an empty set and you have two types of operations. The first one is basically add a line, while the second one is uh, evaluate, find the best line at a certain x position. And what I mean by this is like, the first in the first query, we are given two coefficients, like the first one is the slope a and the second one is b. Those may be like completely different for the queries. And basically what this is, is it adds a linear function, which is f of x is equal to ax plus b to our set. And then the second one is to evaluate the maximum in this set for a given x. And like, in terms of dynamic programming, sometimes you would have some problem where, like, imagine you have like this standard prefix dp, where we have like dp of position p is equal to some formula of like the maximum of the previous dp values and like basically inside of the maximum you have some linear function of uh, the previous dp or some prefix or so something like that and the whole idea th there's like such problems where you would basically rearrange the formula a bit and then you realize that, that the whole thing is like a linear function so that's like the most basic setting where you would use the structure like, like convex trick or leech out tree but also like there are some other cases where you can imagine you can imagine that you have some structure and for example you have to do some binary search or something else but you also need to add some lines and then like the check in the binary search is basically whether the maximum line is uh, at some certain points is less than what we want but yeah i mean like Basically, what I wanted to say is that uh, there there are some use cases. I'll link some problems in the description of the video, and yeah, you can check them out. But in general, it's a pretty cool approach, so I decided to just share it. And yeah, let, let's just get back to the problem. And okay, we have the, these two queries, and we want to solve it in a pretty fast way. So using leech out tree, you would be able to have a logarithm m solution where m is the number of uh, no where m is actually the maximal x coordinate and that's pretty important because like this may be like logarithm of 10 to the 9 but actually like if you if the whole thing is offline this will be a logarithm of n because you can do you can compress the x values before actually doing the whole thing and this will be fine so yeah i mean probably like the most common ways to just have it like as maximum of x but like if you're able to do it offline then it can be even more improved but i mean the uh, th there is like another way to do it which is with dynamic kind of excel trick and it's okay because like uh, i mean like the problem with dynamic convex kind of excel trick is that it's logarithm of n, but unfortunately the constant is very large because you have a set, you have to like go to the next iterator and then the previous iterator and like look at the slope and see whether 
the line we are adding right now is better or not. And like this way you remove some lines. And like, technically it's like, also it's not completely dynamic because the addition and remover are amortized logarithmic because like you can actually remove a lot of lines when you're adding something. While in the case I'm like, in this case we are always just removing one line and yeah, it's, uh, we were when we are adding a line, we aren't removing anything, and it's always just logarithm logarithmic time. So yeah, basically, it's a pretty cool structure, and one benefit of it, which can be done at least in li like at least I know of only one way to do this. It's like you can't really make the convex tree persistent, but leach out tree can be done in a persistent way, and. Yeah, I'm gonna after like explaining the whole thing, I'm gonna like show one use case of having persistent leech out trees, but it's actually a pretty cool thing. And yeah, there's some problems that require it. Maybe not require it, but like can be solved in a e very easy way if you use persistent leech out. And like the other one that I already mentioned is that uh, basically like dynamic convex trick is slower in practice compared to leech out trees. So yeah, that's another reason you would use leech out trees. So okay, let's just go straight to what the idea of leech out trees is. And it's like a dynamic segment tree. Basically like the initial node will define the range from zero to max, where max is like M or, yeah, basically like the maximum X value. Then like the left part is from zero to max over two, the right one is from max over two to max, and it's like a standard segment tree. It's like, because it's a dynamic segment tree, initially it's empty. So yeah, there are no nodes. And like, the idea is that in every node we would keep a line, which in a way would be like optimal for it. And by optimal, we are gonna see what we will mean by optimal. But like, what we want to have for this structure is the following invariant. Basically, the candidates for the answer for a certain x would be the nodes on the path from x to the root. Or in other words, like if you had the full segment tree, which will never happen because like that that's like so many nodes. Like okay, we have a dynamic segment tree, so not all nodes would be present. And yeah, the idea is that we are sure that the optimal line for every x would be on the path from x to the root. Basically, like if we had, for example, max minus one, ma yeah, max, for example, max, oh, max, max minus one, then we are sure that the answer would be one of the nodes on the right slope here. So yeah, not sure if I explained it very well, but yeah, you can stop the video, read the invariant, convince yourself what I mean by it. But basically, like, we want to keep this thing when we are adding some lines. And the main reason we are keeping this while adding lines is because the query then would be very simple and it would just look like that. Actually, let me first explain what we would do. I mean, we know that the candidates are on the path from X to the root. So basically the query would be, look at the root, at the line evaluated at X, that's, candidate for the answer. Then continue, if x is less than the middle, go left, if x is greater than the middle, go right, and recursively do this until you reach a leaf, or until you reach some empty node, because as I said, we won't really have like the whole tree, because initially we have no lines, and in every node we want to have exactly one line, and we also want to have every line in exactly one node. So yeah, I mean, we are basically gonna do this until we reach some null null and then we are gonna stop. Like, as a call, this would be something like that. Basically, we have a query, we have a node in which we are searching for, in which we are right now. Initially, this will be the root and x, which is the x in our query. So the first case is if the node is null, so we can just stop and we return minus infinity because, I mean, we are doing, like our queries are for max, so returning minus infinity is basically nothing. And then like we have like the current interval from left to right, then middle is equal to left plus right over two. And what we are gonna do is basically, if X is less than the middle, 
we do the maximum of the query to the left side and then basically the line in this node so that's like the slope of the line here and then node that line that is the other coefficient of the line in this node we basically evaluate x as this, at this point and yeah we return the larger of the two and similarly if x is greater than middle we basically would go to the right side instead of the left one so yeah the query is pretty simple it just uses the invariant and using it it computes the answer clearly that's the logarithmic because every time we just go left and right and we know that the depth of the tree would be logarithmic and it, yeah like that's basically it about the query and the interesting part is probably the addition and in the addition we have like multiple cases but then like after going through all the cases we will realize that it's just one I mean one or two depends how you can what you consider a case and yeah like let's just get to it and like okay we want to add some line to our structure and initially what we are gonna do is basically we are gonna say add to the root from with like left equal to zero and right equal to max some line add and li like this add function will basically like keep the invariant and then it will like after pre performing the function we are gonna have like basically the new tree which again will keep the invariant okay so the main idea here is imagine we have the following scenario we have like in tree which is the line which are which is inside of the node from left to right and then we are adding this line add so the first observation is that okay we are going to compare middle at position middle the two lines we can notice that add is less than middle in this case so in this way we can just swap the two lines so that we'll ensure that the line in the tree is going to have like greater middle value and actually it's very simple to just swap the two lines because this will basically mean we are going to place this add line to the current node and then we are going to basically add the previous in tree line to the same node and i mean the two scenarios should do basically the same thing so this should be fine and like we are basically going to go to this case where in tree we, we would have like our previous line and then like add would be basically the previous entry line and I mean we are mainly doing this to ensure that the entry line has a greater value at position middle and that's good because this also ensures that either the left side either in the left side or the right side I mean the part from left to middle or from middle to right one of the lines would be irrelevant so in this case uh, look at left to middle and you can see that add in this I mean in this interval from left to middle will never be greater than in tree so there is no point to add the add line to the left part so we can just keep the things as they are and we are just gonna add the add line from middle to right which is basically we run the recursion with the new add line to the right part and yeah because we know we are, have assumed that uh, our add function would keep the invariant using induction it's easy to prove that after the whole process we will again keep the invariant so yeah that, that's like the main idea we always keep the line with the greater the value at middle and we just add the other line to either the left side or the right side Similarly, we have like the other case, which is like that. I mean, the difference here is that look at the intersection. In this side, the, in this case, the intersection is before middle, while the one we looked, the intersection is uh, after the middle. And like, again, we have add and we have like in tree. And let's ensure that the in tree value is greater at position middle so again we can just swap them that's not the case in this case so we basically have like again in tree less than add at middle so we just swap them and after swapping them we basically get this case which is we have like in tree then we have like add 
and we have their order correctly this time. And again, you can notice that add is never optimal, or we can say irrelevant for the interval from middle to right. So we can simply keep in tree at the current node, and we can just add add to left to, to the interval from left to middle, which is just calling the recursion for the left child. And yeah, I mean, basically those are the two cases. And there is also one final case, which isn't that important, but I mean, it won't hurt having it. And it's, you basically have like, imagine you have like add and in tree, and if one of them is better at every point compared to the other one, there is no point in continuing because like, okay, in this case, if we just, okay, let's again start by looking at middle. In middle, in tree is less than add, so what you can do is simply swap them and yeah, stop the process. And then like add will actually be down and in tree would be above, not like I have drawn them here, but like the other case, the other way around. And then you can simply just stop the recursion because you would know that add is worse than in tree in all possible points when we are looking at the interval from left to right. So yeah, we can just stop the whole process. Again, okay, I mean, like looking at all of these cases, we can notice one th common thing, which is that while adding lines, we are always keeping the one with maximal mid value. So yeah, I mean, but basically like what we are doing is we are always keeping the best line evaluated at middle in every node and then depending on the intersection of the two lines we are either going to add to the left part or the right part like basically we are always adding to the part where the intersection is and it's actually pretty cool because okay like these two cases below are what we will have after the swap and you can notice that in the one like the bottom left one, the entry line evaluated at left is greater than the add line, while in the right one, the entry line is actually less than the add line. So yeah, using these two cases, we can like differentiate between the two cases just by comparing the lines evaluated at left. As you can see, here we have the dark line above the the, the above the orange one, while here we have the orange line above the dark one. So in a way, the whole algorithm would be look at the current node. If it's uh, if the line in it is worse than the one we are adding, depending on the middle value, we swap the two lines, and then depending on the left, uh, like depending on the evaluation of the two lines in the left point, we are either going to continue the procedure with the same add line to the left child or the right child. So yeah, here is like an implementation for the whole thing. So basically we have some node and A and B are basically the coefficients of the line we are adding. And what we are gonna do is like, if the node is null, basically we have nothing. So we can just return a new node with this line. I mean, we create a new node with A and B as the coefficients of the line. Yeah, that's like, also the case when, like initially we have no lines, so I mean the whole tree is just null, and we are just adding a node and it will create a new node with the following line. And then we have like two case, we get the intervals and the middle value, and then it's pretty simple, we just compare A multiplied by B mid plus B, that's like the evaluation of the current line, and the other one is like the evaluation of the line in the tree and like if the one we are adding is better than the one in the tree we just swap them otherwise we just keep the, keep it and now we already know that the way to differentiate between the two cases because we know that we are either in this case or this case the way to differentiate between the two cases is simply you compare the left values which is like coefficient by l plus b and the same for the other line and yeah if it's the first case, we go to the left one and update the left child. Otherwise, we just go to the right child. So yeah, but basically, that, like that's it. I mean, here I'm actually missing the case where we have one of the lines always better than the other one. 
if you want, I mean, this one actually, if you have this case, it's uh, it will definitely speed up your program because surprisingly, this will actually happen quite a lot because on like the lower levels, this interval from left to right will be actually relatively small. So it may happen that you would never insert some line. And yeah, I mean, I would advise you to, when you implement the whole thing, to add this case because it's just one additional if and it actually might m may speed up the things. Not quite a lot, but like there would be some difference. So yeah, I mean, generally that's it. Basically, it's a structure that you use when you have like some lines and you want to have queries for optimal line. And yeah, now I'm just gonna quickly mention the whole thing with persistence. Okay, so for the queries, obviously you make no changes to the tree, so no persistence is needed there. While for the addition, there is simply one thing you need to make. Here when you're, basically like here, you create a new node and you make a copy, a copy of the previous one, which is like just node. So yeah, you create a copy of the node. And yeah, I mean, instead of swapping the actual node here, you're gonna swap the copy here. And also here, when you update the either left or right child, you would update the left or right child of the copy. So basically it's like two or three lines, which you would have to change. And maybe like, why would you use this? So imagine the case where you have a tree and you have some dynamic programming, which depends on the ancestors. So you have like some tree and like, yeah, that's my nice drawn thing. So for example, like the DP of this vertex depends on the ancestors of it. And also it's like a linear function of the ancestors. So how would you normally do this? Like there is one approach would, which would be like, just do it all fine, keep some structure and do a DFS, go to a node. Yeah, like just go to a node, add it to like the normal structure, then continue the whole subtree. When you're back at this node, just remove it from the structure or like, uh, as I mean, you basically can keep the version of this structure and continue. But like the main problem with this thing is that uh, for a case like this one, I've already drawn it actually from the previous one, the previous time I actually recorded the video, sadly with no audio, which is pretty sad. But yeah, I mean, imagine this case where we have like some large chain, which has like, for example, n over two vertices. And then you have like all the last vertex of the chain has like n over two children. And what would happen is like, okay, you would build the structure until the last node in the chain. And you can imagine that the structure would have like on uh, lines in it because like that's possible. And then like you would go to the left child, which may, and, and like the left child just has like a very good line, which basically kills all of the lines above. So you would have to remove all of these lines in a normal convex trick. And then like when you're back here, you just use the version, the, pre the previous version. Then again, you go to the second child, which has again, a very good line, which will remove everything from the structure, which will again be ON. And yeah, you would answer the query, then you would go back here and you would push, pop the, I mean, you just recover the previous version and so on and so on. I mean, like if you just use standard convex hill trick, it's, I mean, you can't really do this because uh, like when you're, basically when you're doing something like that, uh, you're popping too many things and that's slow. Because like, as I said, the problem of the actual, the, there's, apart from the constant in like the normal dynamic convex hill trick, there's this other problem where it's actually amortized logarithmic time because you may pop more than one line. And yeah, this case in tree basically exploits that. Here I have to mention that there is a way to make just the normal convex hill trick work faster by using like this uh, binary lifting scheme trick where instead of like just keeping the lines in the set, you, for every line, you also keep the an iterator iterator for the next one, the next one plus two, and so on until every power of two. And this way, you can actually do 
it's just logarithmic instead of uh, like then the removals and everything will be logarithmic and not uh, amortized logarithmic but yeah like in general i prefer the li chao approach because it's way simpler to implement even compared to the normal dynamic segment tree and it's pretty useful when you have just some linear functions and you want to optimize it so yeah i'm gonna link a couple of problems which are just in general for kind of excel trick and they can also be solved with li chao and yeah hopefully this, this was useful for the people who don't know the trick and yeah if someone has some suggestions for other videos because actually I don't I, like I actually don't know uh, what to make a video about feel free to just suggest them and like I actually I have been trying to make some videos which are a bit harder and not some uh, some things that have already been I mean like basically so far I've done one tutorial which is for virtual trees and like this will be the second one which is for leech out trees and if you have some suggestions for interesting topics that you know you may want to hear and you know that there aren't a lot of tutorials online i would love to cover them but yeah i wouldn't like to cover something that's that already has some nice tutorials about because i mean it's not pointless but i would prefer making tutorial about something that's maybe like something that has less tutorials about and yeah Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Probably I'm gonna like post some random implementation or like just add some random videos, uh, random problems. Yeah, I got confused so badly. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed it and I guess see you next time. Thanks for watching.